in today's video I wanted to cover off our expansion chassis options. Now these can be used for both expanding the capacity of a NAS or you can use them simply as a drive for your computer. We do have USB options, SATA options and for the enterprise units uh, we do have SAS units. Um, the one I'm going to show you today is the one on screen here which is the TL-D800C which is a USB connected 8 bay chassis. Um, so just to find out if your NAS can support this, um, there are some steps to go through. So in my example here, I'm going to be doing this um, on a rather tiny in comparison NAS, which is the TS-251D. So one of the first things I would do is I'd go to the product page uh, for the NAS that you want to connect it to. And then at the top, you've got some options here, spec, expansion, compatibility and downloads. If you click on the expansion option, it will take you to the uh, expansion compatibility chart for the NAS you click that button on. So in my case, I did it on the TS251D and it will show you all the different options uh, that you can use with this NAS. You can even use large 12 bay rack mounted um, expansions, the big 16 bay expansion, uh, the desktop chassis. And the one I want to use here is the TLD800C, and I can see that I can support on this NAS one of those connected. Um, so this is a really good place to check if the expansion is going to work with the NAS. And you can change this around at the top, so you can change the drop downs uh, to different uh, categories, different amounts of bays and models, uh, so that you can find exactly uh, which expansions your NAS can use. Uh, so connecting an expansion to the NAS is really easy. I've connected it to the uh, RIA USB 3 port uh, on this NAS, so the, the faster of the two there, the one in blue. Um, so that's the one I've got it connected to. Now this is only a 5 gigasecond port, whereas the chassis I'm going to show you here, this is uh, actually got 10 gig USB. So if you had a better NAS than the TS251D, uh, you would definitely be able to get faster throughputs. You'd be able to get a 10 gigasecond connection down the cable. Uh, the cable we supply with this one is a USB Type A to Type C. On the back of the unit is a Type C connection, so if you wanted it USB C on both ends, uh, by all means swap the cable out to something that's got USB C on both. Uh, we supply the Type A to Type C simply because there is more uh, devices out there with the Type A, um, and same with the NAS. Most of our NAS still have Type A's, not all of them have uh, Type C, so that's why we've included that cable, but it will work if you swap that out. In terms of what it looks like on the NAS, um, so here's the NAS, I've opened up storage and snapshots. One of the first things you'll see pop up is you'll see that you've got an external device connected. So you can pop that out and it shows you that it's connected. Um, in my case, I've got uh, all the drive bays populated in the main NAS as well as in the expansion. So this is giving me an overview. We can see I've already got uh, two data volumes. Uh, the first one, um, re relatively tiny um, on the SSDs I've got inside the main chassis then a much larger uh, volume on the uh, expansion that's listed there. So it's showing you that in the NAS host, you've got drive bays one and two, um, and in the expansion, you've got drive bays one through eight. Um, so if we go to uh, disks slash VJ board, uh, this is gonna show us exactly how everything's laid out. If you need to know which drive bay is where, uh, maybe more important for the larger rack map ones, you, you don't know whether we've started the number one at the bottom or the top, so it's good to, to be able to see visually uh, where the drives are, but if you want any information on the disks that you've got in certain bays, you can see it all here. And as you can see, we've got the NAS host, disks one and two, and I've got some relatively small 240 gig Kingstons. Uh, so these are set up in a small RAID 1 between each other. And then over here on the expansion, I can pull that down, and I've got some rather large 12 terabyte Ironwolf Pro drives. Uh, I've got eight of those in there, um, in, in the whole chassis, so I've got a rather large uh, RAID 6 created here, giving me over 60 terabytes of usable capacity. Um, so I've allocated a volume uh, to the extra storage pool, so if we pull that down, we can see we've got the main storage pool up here, and we've got the uh, extra storage pool down there. So if I was to right-click and go Manage on the main storage pool, uh, we can see that I've got a RAID 1, relatively small, um, uh, uh, RAID 1 setup, so this is where all my main shares are right now. And down here on Data Vol uh, 2, so if I look at Storage Pool 2, we can see that we've got the RAID 6. And it's still currently synchronizing and setting itself up um, because I just created it, it's going to take a few hours. Um, I've set it to uh, allow me to have better access to the NAS rather than uh, get the rebuild done first, so you can adjust the priority of that. So just for the purposes of the video to make the NAS more responsive, I've set this to service first, uh, low speed on the RAID, but you can change that to a higher priority. 
Uh, just out of interest, if you did want to do that, you can click the cog up here, um, and then you can see the different storage pools. So the default storage pool here, storage pool one, it's set to the default medium speed. If I go to storage pool two, I've got it set to service first, uh, but you can set it to resync first as well if you want it to go faster. So it will significantly uh, speed this time up. Okay. Uh, so whilst I've got a data volume there, I've currently got nothing assigned to it. I haven't got any way to use this space currently. Uh, so a way to do that is if you go into your control panel and go to shared folders. Um, so you can see here that I've got two uh, shared folders already created. So to allocate some shared storage on the new storage pool and on the new volume, you can go create shared folder. So here you can create a, a folder name. So I'll call this TLD800C, for example. Um, and I'm going to choose a different data vault. So I'm going to choose, it's fairly obvious in this case, which is which. Um, the one that's only 126 gig is the one on the SSDs on the uh, host drives, the ones in the NAS. And then the one down here is over 60 terabytes. That's going to be the drives in the expansion. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to click Create. And it's going to create me a new shared folder um, in the expansion uh, called TL-D800C. Obviously, name that whatever you'd, you'd, you'd like to use for yourself. Uh, but now we've got the public and homes folder inside the main NAS, and I've also got the TL-D800C uh, shared folder, and that's on the expansion. In terms of how users will see this when they connect, they're just going to see three shared folders. They have no idea that one is uh, on an expansion, one is uh, on the drives inside the NAS, it's completely transparent to the users of the NAS, uh, so it's it's no there's no way for them to tell. It's not like they have to log into something different. Um, it is it is really just like adding another eight drives uh, to your NAS. Uh, so in this case, uh, this NAS is basically now a 10 bay NAS, um, and I do have quite a lot more capacity than I had before. Um, but that's how you connect uh, an expansion uh, chassis to a QNAP. Um, connecting it to a Windows machine is, or a Mac, or a Mac uh, laptop, for example, is very easy. Uh, we do have a RAID manager uh, tool software uh, that you can install to manage which RAID version you're using, things like that. Obviously, when it's connected to the NAS, that's all built into the NAS. Uh, but if you do connect it directly to a Windows or a Mac uh, computer, then you do have uh, an extra bit of software that you should run to set up the initial RAID. Um, it just makes makes it much simpler selecting the RAID. Okay, if anybody does have any questions, uh, please do let us know uh, down in the comments section and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thanks a lot. Bye. Hi, thanks for watching our keynote video. And if you enjoyed the video, why not click like and subscribe and leave your thoughts in the comment below. If you have any questions or you would like to see anything content in a future video, why don't you drop Craig and our team an email at youtube underscore uk at qnet.com. See you in the next one.